On today's show, I'm going to teach you how to break the starting lineup and make sure that you never, ever, ever end up on the bench. Welcome to Turf Talk, where we teach you how to dominate your sport and take your game to the top, no matter what sport you play. Hi everybody, welcome to Turf Talk. This is episode six, I believe. And today we're gonna be talking about a very, very important topic. And again, if you're just joining us on the first episode that you're listening to of Turf Talk here on our podcast, The Brett Summers Show, this show is all about trying to help athletes out. So it doesn't matter what sport you're playing, football, soccer, volleyball, basketball, it doesn't matter what sport you play, uh, or it could be for a parent who has an athlete in the family or a couple of kids or children around. So this show is all about helping you as a parent or you as an athlete get better, get in the starting lineup, play, and not just take your game to the next level, but take your game to the top. So today's episode is really going to be all about that. And as you can see right now, I'm sitting in that dreaded place that no athlete ever wants to be. And this episode is going to hopefully prepare you to never be in this position is right now I'm sitting on the bench. I'm riding the pines. I'm sitting on the sidelines. Uh, fleece is on. Hey, I had, a, I had a kid on my baseball team. He actually still trains here at Top Line in college. His name is Matt. He was a backup. I used to kind of give the backups a hard time, if you, can, if you guys can believe it. Call them rookies and, and pick on them a little bit. Shouldn't have been doing that. Should have been a little better teammate, but in any event, in baseball, we have these like fleeces, these like majestic, you know, baseball. It's like a baseball brand fleeces that you'd wear. And I'd always tell them, Mayor, make sure you keep that fleece on. You ain't never getting in the game. So just sit there, keep the fleece on. And anytime that the coach would call him off the bench, I'd, I'd make a big deal of it, give him a hard time. But anyways, this show is all about today, trying to get you guys to not end up on the bench, to not be on the sidelines. And we've all been there. I've been a backup before, not broke the starting lineup on teams. Britt's been there. Blake, who's sitting in the office. I don't know why Blake's not. This dude should be listening, right? Oh, there he is. Blake's in, Blake's in here. We've all been there. You rode the pines for a while, right? And these guys have never heard the term riding the pines. Riding the pines means you're sitting on the sidelines, that you're not in the game. You feel like you're a B team or you feel like you're a backup. doesn't matter if you're injured doesn't matter if you just you didn't prepare for the season or if you really are neck and neck with the guy or gal who's ahead of you and you just didn't break the line. There's no worse place to be than the sidelines. And this show is dedicated today to getting you from the sidelines and to get you onto the turf. Actually, I forgot. It's turf talk. We don't even have the turf show. We'll have to show you guys the turf in just a minute to make sure you guys don't forget about uh, the fact that that's the name of this show is turf talk. But follow along with me today, guys, that I take you guys from being bench warmers to being starters. The first step, if you're a backup and you're trying to get in the starting lineup, you want to break that starting lineup, the first thing you got to do is ask your coach what you can do to get in the starting lineup. Oh my gosh. See, we were just talking about that stuff a minute ago, guys. All the, the big things that are going to take you from where you are, all the big leaps, can be done in simple steps. Ask your coach what you need to work on. Privately, You don't have to do it in front of the whole team. It doesn't have to be a big deal. You don't have to make social media posts about it. All you got to do is go up to your coach and say, hey, Susie or John or whatever your coach's name is, what do I do to have to be one of the starters and impact players on our team? You've seen my game. You've seen what I've done. I know right now technically on the depth chart I'm not a starter. What do I need to do to break the starting lineup? That's it. Don't have your parent do it. If you're a parent, oh, please, God, don't go talk to the coach on behalf of your kid. Your job as a parent is to lead your kid and to develop them into a young adult. And it doesn't matter if they're in sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, or even if in grade school, I would be trying to teach my kids, hey, you need to go ask your coach that, jot the notes down, and then come break it down with me. As a parent, you don't need to be interfering, especially in high school. If you're a parent and you're doing that in high school, you shouldn't even show up at the games. You should be stuck at the house. Your job as a parent is to get your kids to be able to communicate, um, not to do that. 
So hopefully you guys don't get mad that I dropped that. Parents, keep watching. It's going to be a good show. But go ask it. Now, the best time to do this is not during the season or while you're in training camp or when you just start. The best time to do this is in the off season. If you weren't a starter as a freshman, you go ask your coach, what do I got to do to be a starter on varsity or JV the next year? And then now you know what you need to work on the entire off season. So make sure you go talk to your coach. That's step one. Number two is model the masters. If you have starters on your team that are crushing it, and you know that you're a backup right now because rightfully so, they are just absolute beasts on the field, no matter what sport it is, you have to start to think to yourself, well, if they're that good, what are they doing that I can then do, that I can just steal and swipe and put into my arsenal so I can become a starter? We had a couple of kids in here the other day, brothers, um, and, and several other guys from their school. And so we went to their high school football game last Friday. Now, one of the guys is out there making every tackle on the field. He's it's this football player, making every tackle po possible. Like any play, it doesn't matter where they are, the guy's making the tackle. Dude was in here in the offseason training with us all offseason. You've got two other guys that are out there balling out, brothers in the same family, and they spent during the off season, you know, fall, winter, spring, summer, they're in here working, getting ready for their off season. Now these guys are out here balling out. Four touchdowns combined, interceptions, tackles, big plays. Everybody's oohing and on, not realizing that these guys put in so much work and dedication since they were freshmen and sophomores that they outworked everybody. So if I'm their backup, what do I do? All I do is say, what are these guys doing? Now most of the time you can just see it and then replicate it. You know, it wouldn't hurt to ask, say, hey, what do you think I should do to the starter? You go ask the starter now and communicate to them. What should I do? How can I model what you're doing so that I can be prepared to either fill your role when you're gone or to be able to be a nice spell out for you if you get gassed and you get tired? Now I might be able to get in the lineup. Come on, guys, this is super simple. Sometimes you just got to go see what the greats are doing and then model it. You can get that from NFL players to college players all the way down to your own teammates in high school and in youth sports. Model the masters, find out what they're doing, and, and get, the, get it done. Now, the next thing is important. When do you start to work on all these things you're starting to learn? What your coach told you, what your teammates told you, what's that third thing? Don't wait until the off season to start working on it. You ain't a starter. You're a backup. This is your off season. Even while the season's going, if you ain't a starter, if you're sitting right here alongside me on the bench, which is uncomfortable, I just, I don't even like sitting here right now because I just don't feel right. I should be in the freaking game. I should be playing. But right now I'm sitting on the bench trying to talk to you rookies out there and you got to make sure that you understand that this is your opportunity to get bigger. This is your opportunity to get stronger and get faster and take all the information from your coach and take all the information from your teammates and, and all of those things that you know you need to work on and then go work on them during the season. Get your studies done, go to practice, and then if you truly want to get in the lineup, you have to go work on that. You can't wait till the season's over. This is your off season. You are a backup. You are officially not a starter. You need to be in the batting cage during the season. You need to be, I would, back in the day when I was in the lineup, I would make backups on the team go into the cage along the sides during the, if they had a batting cage at the stadium, I would be in there taking BP all game. I'd tell the coach, dude, I ain't sitting over here. And then what happened is anytime there was a, a guy who was struggling at the plate, anytime, this is my first year of, of really playing college baseball, Anytime somebody was struggling, what do you think they did? Get Summers out here to pinch hit. And then you know what I did when I come in there? I'd come in there and stroke, because that's just what I did. I was ready, I was prepared. I'd go up and rake, and then because I did that even just a few times and on a Florida trip, I remember it vividly, in a Minnesota trip, vividly, I literally sat in the tunnels at the Minnesota Metrodome and hit the entire game until I got my opportunity. So just because you, your season's Underway, it doesn't mean you can't work and get better. If you're a backup, start now. If you don't start now, trust me, you probably won't do it during the off season. So you're probably a lost cause as it is, and maybe you'll just be on the bench forever. Every team needs some bench guys. Maybe that's what you want. But if you don't want to be there, start your off season now. Bigger, stronger, and faster. Now, how do you do that? Simple, you find resources. Now you have your school weight room, you have your school stuff, you could do that, cool. But now you have places like Topline. Not only is it a strength, speed, conditioning, um, 
so we can take care of your physical, but let's say you're a football player. Now you can come in here, you can sign up with Coach Bodenstein, who's in the building right now, and this dude will break down your game, he'll assess you, he'll take what your coaches said, he'll take some of the information you gave him, then he'll make his own assessment, and then he's gonna design a program to start making you better. Every Saturday and Sunday, the guys out there working, and, and you know what the funny thing is? I think the guys you work with more often than not are actually starters. Dude, that's sad. All you backups out there, all you guys following the top line football uh, page on Instagram, if you're a backup, you need to get in here on Saturdays and Sundays because the starters are doing it. If the starters are actually getting the extra work in, you backups should be doing the same thing. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting here on the sidelines. Your jersey's going to be all clean at the end of the game. You're not going to be sore. You're going to look, you're going to have the, 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 the eye black on. You'll be spatted and you'll have no grass on you. Not a speck in sight. Not one rep in the game. And you over here trying to celebrate a win. Come on, guys. Get in here Saturdays and Sundays. Get the extra work in. You've got opportunities to get better. Your offseason starts now. Now, let's go into a couple of things. Do the little things. What's little? I can show up early. When I was a backup, I go to play Division I baseball. I'm a backup. Cool. I'm going to show up. I'm going to bring all the sunflower seeds. Ranch, barbecue, I mean, these dudes, I was doing it so much that the guys weren't even saying, hey, thanks anymore. They were just like telling me, hey, Summers, dude, we need more nacho cheese seeds. I'm like, damn, damn, dude, I'm over here trying to help you guys. Now you're making demand. Yeah, yeah, and where's the bubble gum? We liked when the bubble gum, so I'd put the big league chew, I'd put it in the seeds, right? I'm doing whatever I could. I'm trying to get reps. I'm trying to get reps. Coach is sitting out there chewing and spitting seeds. I'm like, yeah, dude, hey, remember? I brought them seeds. Maybe I can get in that bat today. Come on, Duffy, give me a chance. Duffick usually didn't give me a shot, although I love Duffick. Scott Duffick, you ever listen to this? I appreciate you bringing me on the team, being on the roster. But it was Jerry Augustine, the former brewer, he'd show up out of the blue and he'd say, hey, Hollywood, did you get an at-bat? I'd be like, no, dude, I've been in the bullpen for like seven hours. I'm literally sitting here for seven hours. I was, so, I was catching so much at that point, I didn't even wear a mask in the bullpen. I'm just sitting here, bang, just sitting here. The guy's throwing 90, I'm blocking balls. I didn't even wear a mask anymore. I had been catching so much, I could wake up out of a dead sleep and start framing balls because I had been doing it so much. But I wasn't getting at bats, I wasn't getting in the game, and luckily my coach did. And it took a little convincing, trying to get on the radar sometimes to get in there and get, and get my shot. I wish I would have been doing more of this stuff to get in the lineup and know what I needed to do before I got to training camp. So again, I wish I knew all this stuff. That's why I'm trying to help you parents and you athletes out there to get in the lineup. Do the little things, show up, help the training staff, show up, set up the film equipment, um, go in and try and meet with your coach. Buy your, buy your coach coffee once a week, simple. Or if they like soda, do that. Uh, when I was at Concordia Christian School, my coaches liked beers. They call them tall blondes. So. I'm like, okay, he wants a tall blonde, which is a Miller High Life. I, I, I shouldn't even drop that probably on here, right? Because, you know, it's, it's 2019. Kids, you know what people drink. So these old timers wanted to chew and they wanted to, uh, to drink. So I bring them a little dip and I bring them, I bring them a 12 pack of, of uh, liquor. And then they'd maybe give me some more information. I kind of buy a little equity with them. So I don't know if that's bribery or not, but I, you know, sometimes you got to grease the wheels on people to get what you want done. And that's just one of those little things I did. Here's another thing. Once you did all this stuff, you're doing the little things. You're showing up. You're showing on time. You've talked to your coaches. You've talked to your teammates. You've went and you've hired Blake to, to sit and do quarterbacks stuff with you one-on-one -on -one every Saturday and Sunday. And even during the week, you know, at, at 11 o'clock, because a guy like Blake will do that. You're doing all that. Now what do you do? You ask the coach for your opportunity. You do it with humility. You, you don't do it in front of everybody. You don't make a big stink about it. You say, hey, coach, you know, I've been doing this now and I've been meeting with you every week, letting you know my progress. I'm showing you my videos of, of some of the things I'm working on. You're seeing some of it in practice. You've even mentioned, hey, I can see that you're making improvements. You see that I've gained 10 pounds of muscle. I'm moving faster. I'm helping my teammates. I'm communicating. I'm doing all these things. Now, coach, all I need is I need an opportunity. If that's soccer, that means you need to get on the field. I, coach, I need seven minutes to where you can, I can get out there, take the starter out, put me in, let, put us in competition mode, let us go head to head, let us do whatever we have to do. If you're a quarterback, hey, give him a series, give me a series, give him a series, give me a series. All I need is one practice to try and showcase my abilities, okay? 
and do it with humility and say, I love my teammates and I, I love your decision as them being the starter and I respect that. I know my position right now, but I also want you to know you always have a player in me who can come off the bench if the quarterback gets injured or if one of your soccer teammates get, gets injured or if, if the pitcher gets injured and the coach needs a new starter because your fingernails are, are too long and you can't throw the ball that day or whatever it is, you got a hangnail that the coach can trust you to come off the bench and get in there and get, and get the job done. So do it with humility and then it's all on you. That's why when you do all this work, now you'll be confident enough to ask for that opportunity. If you didn't put the work in, you're just gonna be, you're just gonna like, just lay up and just be like, okay coach, I'm just gonna ride the pines for the rest of the year. Just clean jerseys, clean uniforms, clean. Look at this. I know dudes that are cool with this. That back in the day, they were cool at riding the pines. They'd be joking and, and grabbing each other and wrestling with each other. You ever have guys like that? That like wrestle before the games and stuff? Oh my gosh. In any event, I mean, we had some of those guys are good guys, but golly, don't you ever want to play the game, a competitor? I remember we'd lose games and guys would be like joking around after the game. I'm like storming around. I probably should have handled loss a little bit better, but I'd be ready to like, I'd be ready to punch our own teammates. Because these dudes would be like joking and be like, yeah, let's eat, let's get pizza. I couldn't eat, I couldn't focus. We lost. And I don't like losing, I definitely don't like sitting on the bench. Now, best case scenario. Here you go, you got your best case and worst case scenario after this. Best case scenario, you become a starter. You beat the person out and you earn your starting spot. During the season or before the season, you earn your spot. Worst case scenario is actually not that bad. Worst case scenario, your coach knows that he has a freaking player behind whoever's out there. This girl can go out there and just dunk basketball. She's ready to go in case the starter goes down. This, this girl is the, is the best spiker we have. She's the best volleyball player we, we have. And if somebody goes down, that's our number one bench player right now, and they're going in the game. Or if somebody's just slacking out there, they're going in. So worst case scenario, you're probably going to find your way in the lineup. Or even worse than that, the next year, you'll be the starter, but this year, you are where you are. You weren't prepared before the season, and you didn't earn your spot. So if you guys are out there, and you're riding pines, if you're sitting on the sidelines, and you're hating things, and you're losing passion for the sport because of it, those are several things you guys can do to try and get in the game. And I've been there, I've been where you are. You just heard some of my stories. I've been there, I feel for you, but don't just accept it. Don't just tolerate it, and don't just go, oh, coach doesn't like me. You don't know. Go ask your coach. Go figure out some of those things. If you're a parent, dude, if you're a parent, can you look at your kids objectively for just a minute? Every parent thinks their kid should be in the game. Did your kid even do anything? I've seen parents come in here and drop their kids out. Oh, yeah, you know, and then start spouting off D1 schools for like football. And I look at the kids, doesn't look like they ever took a rep. Didn't ever look like they did, did one push up can't move, feet work all wrong, false steps all over the place, they ain't going D1. You know, they'll struggle to, to get on Concordia's roster and play D3. I mean, for crying out loud, you got to put the work in. If you're a parent, look at your kid's objective and be like, for real, do they have a shot? You know, if they're five, seven, and they can't really move, and they only work during the season, they're probably not going to go play at Miami and be a hurricane and be their starting quarterback because they just don't have it. So I like being unrealistic and shooting big, but look at your kid. Are they putting the work in? Should they be a starter? Don't get all fired up at your coach, the head coach, and go sit there and be making phone calls and stuff like that. Don't be that parent because you know if your kid actually put the work in or not. Yeah, there are politics at all levels of sports from youth to the high school to college, and I even had politics uh, in my high school and where I was kind of blackballed a little bit, but I said, hey, if I can do anything on this team, I, I, I remember saying it, if I can do anything, just let me do it, and I'm gonna do whatever I can. I don't care where you put me, just let me do it. And a week later, I was right where I needed to be. I kind of got pushed right into the lineup. The, the king quarterback guy who, who was in my position on the football team, he was also in my spot on baseball, and they said, this dude, he just couldn't get it done that year, so they brought me and I earned my spot. And that's what I want for you as an athlete, Male, female, it doesn't matter who you are, what sport you're playing. And as a parent, I want your kids to play. We want to see your kids succeed. That's why we started Top Line Gym. That's why we're now venturing into sports training, which is skill work. We don't do sports-specific strength training, per se, because strength training is all relative. Each athlete has to get bigger and stronger and be able to absorb the impact to avoid injury in their sport. So 
it is what it is. You can call it sports specific. I might even call it sports specific to you just because that's what you think they need. But really what they need is skill specific in football, skill specific in the other football, which Brit loves, which is the, the, the other football, which is soccer. And then you have all these other sports we want to venture into as we expand our facility. And we want your son or daughter or athlete to get better. And to be honest, all the stuff I just mentioned for the most part can be done in business. It can be done in your faith. It can be done in your relationships. All those things, going to ask your significant other, hey, what could I do better to improve our relationship? Or you go ask your boss, hey, you know, I know I'm, I'm at where I'm at. I'm earning what I'm earning right now, but I want to earn more. What can I do to take my game up to the top, right? You don't just want to get to the next level because that might only be here. You want to take your game up as high as you can go. What do I need to do to get there? You can do it in your faith and say, hey, man, I really don't know where I can start with this whole faith thing, right? Because that's important to me, so I always mention it. I don't know where to start. I, I, I'm, a, I, I want, I, I'm, there, I'm there, but I don't really know where to start. Go talk to someone. Come ask someone like me. And I'm like a, I'm like a D-level Christian because I'm still pretty messed up. But I could give you some things that I'm doing that might help you out. So if they allow me into church, they'll allow you into church. They'll allow anybody into church. Trust me, because if anybody shouldn't be in there, it should be me. But ask people where you can start. Ask people where you can improve. And people are really willing to help you. You just have to go out there and put yourself out there a little bit, which is a little uncomfortable. But in the long run, it's really going to help you guys out. Hope you enjoyed the show. I'm really uncomfortable right now being on the bench. It's not a place I ever want to be. I want to be out on the field taking action. I think that's where you want to be. Britt just told me I hit 20 minutes, so this is going to be a long upload. She's probably fired up. So I'm going to close it out, guys. I'm going to close it out. I appreciate you guys. I got the hat on today because I didn't shave my head. Blake's behind me. Blake, what would you think of the show, bro? I think it was a lot of good advice. A lot of good advice. Do you think these people should be checking out some of the other videos on the page? Yeah. Um, Look at this guy. He's sharp. Dude's got the Nike vest. Dude's got the Nike. He looks like a coach, man. He looks like a coach. He acts like a coach. Dude's passionate. If your kid needs help, get him in here. We're here to help you guys out. Go on the website, toplinegym.com. And if you're on YouTube, here, check out some of these other videos. Britt, anything? What's up? Uh, That's it. All right, we'll catch you guys soon. Take care.